The biceps are a muscle that make an average physique stand out and even play a large role at the competitive level by helping bodybuilders win closely contested shows. So for a muscle that holds such high value in the eyes of anyone from recreational lifters to pro bodybuilding judges, how did we let the fitness industry downplay the importance of biceps for a well-developed physique? It's not uncommon to hear that bicep training isn't quote-unquote functional, and you see them be referred to as a small muscle that won't play much of a role in adding size to your frame. While the latter has some truth to it, who is actively against bicep training and why? The conclusion I've come to is that the fitness industry has been dominated by powerlifting, something natural hypertrophy discusses extensively on his channel, and this is something I've experienced firsthand, which I discuss extensively on my channel. Powerlifting is a sport where the biceps play a minor role at best. It also wouldn't be far-fetched to claim that some more experienced lifters who have paid their dues for years doing heavy barbell compound lifts don't want to see new lifters take the quote-unquote shortcut and just simply do bicep curls to get big biceps. You see this gatekeeping all too often, but enough on the cultural aspects of bicep training. Let's get into how bicep training actually works. So, from an anatomical perspective, the biceps have two heads. They have the long head, which is the outer portion of the bicep, where the bicep peak will be most prominent, and the short head, which is the meaty inner portion that looks a little bit more like a baseball, especially when they're more developed. The amount of activation each head of the bicep has will change depending on shoulder positioning, with some evidence pointing towards the long head or the bicep peak being far less active during lifts with the elbows in front of you, like a preacher curl for example. To fully lengthen the long head of the bicep, you will need to place the elbows behind you, so an incline curl will take care of this for example. The bicep has three main functions. It's going to be elbow flexion, shoulder flexion to a degree, and then wrist supination. Elbow flexion will be the meat and potatoes of bicep function. It's likely that regional hypertrophy will play a role here to a degree, with some evidence pointing towards muscle fibers within the bicep being anatomically positioned in a more advantageous position for some functions rather than others. For example, some muscle fibers in the bicep may play a larger role in elbow flexion, and some may be better suited for wrist supination. Regional hypertrophy in the proximal versus distal regions may be a factor here too, with the proximal region being closer to the shoulder and the distal region being closer to the elbow joint, with some evidence hinting that lifts biasing the biceps in the lengthened position may cause more hypertrophy in the distal region specifically. As mentioned in my video on resistance profiles, isolation lifts, which happen to be the bread and butter for bicep training, will usually be trained in a pendulum style resistance profile. So taking resistance profiles into account when programming bicep work is worthwhile. For more on how resistance profiles work, check out that video. Now, in my personal experience, I feel noticeably more of a pump in the distal region of my biceps after preacher curls, which are lengthened by a lift. And I do feel sensations of that area working harder during the lift itself. So this is mostly speculation, but sometimes when there's smoke, there's fire, although in lifting, this isn't always the case. When it comes to training the biceps, intensity is a must. Proximity to failure is going to be key to growing your biceps, which is becoming evident in science and something we've known by observing lifters who have successfully grown big biceps for decades. As far as tangible recommendations, I typically suggest training biceps to zero reps in reserve meaning you don't fail a rep, but you couldn't have gotten another. Actually, hitting failure is a viable option too, but I find focusing on hitting failure leads us to cut corners just for the sake of failing a rep, rather than focusing on getting adequate stimulus, which doing as many reps as you can with your target technique can actually help with. Doing long length partials past failure on short biased curls is also showing to be a potent stimulus, which I've been including myself. Basically, to summarize this, I never leave reps in the tank on bicep training. If a lift is new to you or it's a uh, resistance profile you haven't trained very extensively before, maybe like a preacher curl, for example, it might be worth taking a couple weeks just to ease into training closer to failure. But generally speaking, as long as you're a healthy individual and you have some training experience, pushing your, your bicep training hard to zero reps in reserve or even beyond failure in certain situations should be totally fine. When it comes to programming bicep training, 
The biggest mistake I see is lifters feeling the need to train every function and every region of the biceps at once in their current program. In these cases, lifters fail to recognize overlap between functions and regions of the bicep, looking at each variable in isolation. The way I like to see it is you're not training each variable or each region in isolation. There's always going to be some degree of overlap, and this is more of a biasing thing. So a lift that trains the, the long head better than the short head is just biasing the long head, not just training the long head while leaving the short head on the back burner entirely. If a lift targets the long head best, the short head will still be active and stimulated in the vast majority of cases. If a lift biases the muscle fibers positioned best for elbow flexion, it's highly likely the muscle fibers designed for wrist supination are also firing, maybe not to their highest extent, but they're also going to be working. In practice, the best approach i found is to periodically rotate lifts to include different functions of the muscle. I like to call my method of programming reactive periodization. This means I don't plan when I will rotate my lifts, but I do plan to a degree what lifts will be up next in the rotation simply by selecting exercises that train functions or bias functions or different regions of the bicep, which my current or previous variation was missing. The reason I don't plan when I rotate lifts in a more proactive fashion is because I put more stock into technique efficiency. The more skilled you are in a lift, the more muscle fibers you recruit. Essentially, you can get more stimulus out of lifts that you're familiar with, especially in the short term, and you can reduce your time learning technique for a new lift and finding your work weight, which will inevitably provide less stimulus. This is less important for bicep training in most cases due to the lifts being on the simpler side, but it's still a factor I take into account, but more so for complex movement patterns like pressing, squat, or hinge patterns, for example. To summarize, you'll want to maximize the lifts you're currently doing in your program. When you rotate lifts, it's a good idea to select a lift that biases or involves a different region or function of the bicep. For example, in my own training, preacher curls currently take up the majority of my bicep training volume, which bias the short head, likely in the distal region, with my elbows in front of my torso with a lengthened bias. An incline curl would train my biceps behind my torso, activating the long head, potentially more of the proximal region due to a resistance profile that biases closer to the short position. Dumbbells would also allow me to train supination, allowing for another function to be trained while emphasizing the stretch. I can also play around with using some shoulder flexion, which is yet another function of the biceps that the incline curl trains, which the preacher curl does miss out on. So ultimately, the way that I see bicep training and just training a muscle in general is you don't have to train every function in your program all at once, but what you focus on will just be a bias towards what you focus on each phase. So when you rotate lifts, you can focus on different areas or different functions of that muscle. And over time, everything will become developed because the biasing is more so the rate of progress or the rate of growth of different functions or regions in that specific muscle. It's not like you're leaving entire portions of the muscle on the back burner entirely. It's just slightly tweaking the rate of growth, most likely in each region or function. If you did enjoy learning about biceps function, anatomy, and biasing, and want to see some actual in the trenches bicep training, I document all of my arm training on this channel. Every weekend, I'll post up another episode of my Road to 18-inch Arm series. My arms are around 17.5 inches, maybe a little bit higher as I record this. Haven't measured them in a couple weeks, but either way, you can see how I actually train my bicep. You can see my exercise selection, how often I rotate lifts, and most importantly, how hard I train my biceps and my arms in general. So it's good to understand the practical stuff, and it's good to understand why the biceps function as they do and how they function, but actually seeing it firsthand can teach you not just what to do, but how to do it. So that's the goal that I aim to provide with this series. So if you guys have any other questions or anything regarding this topic, feel free to leave it in the comments. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I will see you guys in the next one.